The market grinds lower but stays in its range. Is it time for range expansion? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, first, happy leap year day, where if you were born today, you only get to celebrate your birthday once every four years, and you got to wait 84 years before you can drink a beer. I'm not sure who has it worse for stupid jokes, April Fool's babies, or leap year babies, but I'm going to make the jokes either way. In the market, nothing really happened. The market chopped sideways, but we did see some selling after the bell, and they're pressing on support again. And with three days of range contraction, we should be looking for some expansion. The question is, which way? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use a late wave theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, before we jump into the charts, it is basically the end of the month, except for, you know, leap years. And we had another great month. You can see on the screen from Scott, he did really well. He would have done better. We didn't have a great day yesterday. We got stopped out on a couple trades and took calculated risk on one that we ended up breaking even on. And those things happen and those days happen. That's part of trading. But overall, we win and we make money, and that's what's important. Over in PT land, you can see that they're just watching the market and collecting money on their income trades, having an awesome time. If you want to be part of a group that wins and makes money in the market, you are missing out if you aren't in ours. I highly encourage you to do that. Check out later in the video to find out how. Now let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And ever since we bounced up in this high off of the NVIDIA catalyst, I've been saying this looks like an expanded B wave and they would likely sell into it even if it was just a 4 or 5. We've already come in to the wave 4 support and the bulls have not been able to get off the mat. And now in the after hours here, you can see this big red candle coming down. It's big because I have the screen stretched, but it's like a 12 point, 13 point candle. And that's pretty odd in the after hours when there's no major catalyst like an NVIDIA earnings or an Apple earnings or a, you know, a Fed announcement or something like that. So the market is selling back down into support at this 5066 area, testing the lows from overnight earlier. And if they break through that, we could see the start of a bigger move down. The issue I have with this, and I had it yesterday and I have it today because nothing has really changed, is the structure. Now, I could be on board with this being a leading diagonal down. You can see the diagonal structure with the two lines. You could count this as one, two, and then this would be three, four, and five for one where four gets up into wave one territory, you have the diagonal structure. The only issue I have with this is normally you'd see a much better bounce back towards this 5110 area and then down. So normally you have a bounce that's higher and then come down, but that's normally, and not everything plays out the way you think each time. So there are times that you get things that are a little bit different than what you would expect. We still got a bounce, which is valid. We still got a wave two bounce here back up into resistance. They were unable to break through and now they're pushing down to try to break this low. Should they break down through this low, we do have a legitimate one, two, one, two setup where we'd be breaking down in three of three. And if that's the case, okay, we would be looking for wave three to come down into this 49.95 area, the 1618. And to give us confirmation that we're breaking down, we really want to break this 764 at 5041. The 5041 level is the bottom of the pivot, and that's kind of the indication that we're breaking down in a bigger structure. If that's the case, 5014 would be the first target. We'd look for a bounce and then down into that 4990 area. Overall, looking at 4970, testing these lows here uh, from the CPI move down. And we could push through those into the Fed lows. But with the 2.0 hitting at these lows, it would make sense to test here and then go higher. So this becomes a pretty critical area should they break down this 4970 area. If they break through that, then it's more likely we're going to go test the Fed lows at 4860. And that's another 100 point drop. Now to see that, we would want to see a bigger wave three on the way down. So instead of wave three hitting in the 4900 area, we would want wave three to hit basically down here at these lows, then get a bounce, then one more push down to the Fed lows in this 4860 area. That would be a lot of extensions in wave three. Um, they would have to push almost to the 2.0 without a break. And I'm not saying they can't do that. The Nvidia move was very much like that. And they could retrace that really quickly and one, you know, move down without any kind of major bounce. 
but that's a pretty extended wave three. So I'll have to see that first to believe it. Right now, the target is the CPI lows, and that's where we would expect the market to hold unless we see some extensions in wave three. So that would be the setup to the downside. Again, I don't love the structure. You're dealing in an overlapping structure to set it up, so it's not great. I would think that given this structure... We would want to see the 764 break at the uh, 5041 level before we have more confidence in this kind of move. Now, we do have some data coming out in the morning, and we did have three days of basically grinding in small ranges. And usually, when that happens, you see a bigger move, whether it be up or down, just to expand out of this contraction. They build energy, then they push out in one way or the other. So, a big move down or up tomorrow is uh, over the next couple of days, starting tomorrow, I think is um, likely but it's just going to depend on whether they hold support or break support as to which direction. Now for the upside, I do think the bulls need another low here where you could count this a little differently as an AB and then C comes down as a diagonal. They need to hold the 5048, 5049 area. Uh, the, that is the bottom or top of the pivot, however you want to say it, the top of the pivot for the downside and also the 50% retrace. And wave fours really shouldn't push past the 50% retrace of wave three. If they do, they very rarely play out to the upside. So we'd want to see 5048 hold. We'd want to see another low, maybe a spike low here, and then back up. And then we want to see over that 5110 area. If they do that and push through 5110, then we're on our way towards 5156 as our next target higher in this wave three off of that wave four low. So you have wave four of three, wave five of three. So this is a wave four and five to complete a bigger wave three, 51, 56 being the target. So essentially that 50, 48, 50, 49 area is the line in the sand. We would let for the bullish case below that. And I start to look more toward the uh, CPI lows than the Fed lows, depending on how it plays out. And uh, I would want to see a spike low because this is pretty ugly price action off of this low. It's not impulsive, so I would want to see a spike low before I saw the bulls try to charge it higher. Over on the NASDAQ. Okay, the NASDAQ is even uglier to the downside, and this is why I am skeptical about the bigger downside move. But if they break support, I will get on board with it. This would also have to be a leading diagonal. Uh, the last push down here to give them another low did help out after the close. That does give you more of a one, two, three, four, five look uh, in this diagonal and then you'd look for a wave two bounce and then a breakdown. So because in, uh, NQ has just finished a wave one, or at least appears to have finished a wave one, right into their support area, okay, we would look for a bounce off of this 17.839 support. If we can get that, that would be the bullish case. We'd look for the bulls to take it back up. We'd want them to push over the 18.060 area, if they do that, then it becomes more likely we're on our way to this 18299 area to complete its bigger move up in wave five of three. And then we'd look for one more pullback and one more push higher towards 18500. That would be the bullish case. Uh, their line in the sand to the downside is the 17751 area below that, and we start to look much lower. But because they do look like they need a wave to bounce, I would not be surprised if the downside path plays out with a failed breakout on the ES. They try to bounce it up on the data in the morning, fail, and then go down. Same with NQ. They try to bounce it up and fail and then melt down. I would look for a bounce before the breakdown. Doesn't mean they have to. It doesn't mean they will. Just the overall structure looks like it wants to bounce and then break down if they're going to come to the downside. Uh, for that, we would have to see where wave two gets to, but essentially you're going to want to see a bounce and then a break of this wave one low. If they break that or 17,750, that would be a strong indication that the downside move is playing out and the bears are going to go ahead and push it down to try to test these lows down here in the 17,475 to uh, 17,250 area. So both charts ugly to the downside, but also at support. So if they can break through support, the bears can continue. It just wouldn't be an ideal pattern. If they hold support and start a strong move higher, then the bulls would look to all-time highs. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link, and it will take you right to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible monthly plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial. 
This is because I want you to get in there and check it out. I want you to become part of the team. I want you to meet PT and I. Make sure it's for you. Make sure we trade in a way that you're comfortable with. Make sure that what we say on these videos is true. It is, but you can check it out and make sure before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time and there's no risk to you. So you have nothing to lose by checking this out. We also have our training material and our advanced Elliott Wave course is just about done. You can see in here we have our introduction, the advanced fib levels, the diagonals, the double and triple threes, the flats, the triangles, trading Elliott Wave, where we go through how to trade. We also go over the 401k strategy that we use to kill the market. We get in uh, near bottoms and out near tops, and it really helps us make a profitable 401k and compound it much faster than you would expect. Uh, as you can see on the screen, people are really loving this information. It helps them when the market has complex patterns like we're in right now and it helps them diagram that and get through it. But if this is a little too much for you right now, we do have our Elliott Wave for Beginners online course. This course is helping real traders make real money and finally understand the market in a way that makes sense. It can be very confusing when good news makes the market go down and bad news makes the market go up. And Elliott knew long ago that the news cycles were worthless. He knew that the key levels mattered and if those key levels held, what would happen? And if those key levels broke, what would happen? And this is a huge advantage over the rest of the market. The course itself is 25 videos in three parts where we go through your introduction. That's your expectations, your mindset, your KISS method, and why Elliott Wave works. Your chart setup and tools. We go through every single tool you need to use with Elliott Wave, why and how to use it. And we go over the Elliott Wave for beginners area, which is all of your waves, how, they, uh, how to measure them, how to understand how they work, where their failure points are, what their key levels are, what happens when those key levels hold and break, the theory of alternation, the corrective depth theory, the pivot, everything you want to know to understand the market in a way that makes sense. Also, the cool thing is, if you want to do this program and then do the advanced program, you get them both free just by becoming a monthly member. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts, as well as answer all of your questions, go over some market indicators, go over different things. We learn and train in there every day. It's about a 30 minute call most days. Lots of questions. That call alone to me is worth the price of admission. I love that call. I love being on it because I love talking about the market. We also have the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ and we swing and day trade which means we trade quite often in my room. If you're looking for futures trading, individual stocks, income trading, which you've seen every day, guys, just kills the market. PT crushes it. And PT's reduced risk binary method that gets you in at a cheap price and gets you big multiples on your money. It's how he structures that trade that's so unique and it's really something you have to see to understand. That's another reason we give you that seven day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. Key takeaways for today, it's all about support. If the bulls can hold 50.49 or above and break back over 51.10, then we are on our way to the 51.56 area next. If they break below 51.50 or 50.50, then we are looking at a bigger move down to test the CPI lows and potentially the Fed lows. Over on the NASDAQ, same setup. We are looking at support. They traded down into it here after the close. 17,839 is the upper number. 17,751 is the lower number below that. And it's more likely we come down to test these lows above that and through 18,060. And it's more likely we're on our way to 18,300. Guys, that is your market update for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.